JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. And JSA Radio, your voice for tech and telecom on iHeartRadio. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, and on behalf of my team here at JSA, welcome to our monthly virtual roundtable. We are bringing together top thought leaders talking about topics important to our industry in our monthly virtual roundtable series, available right here on JSA TV YouTube channel, as well as on JSA Radio, the only tech and telecom podcast series currently available on iHeartRadio. These monthly roundtables lead us up to our on-site CEO roundtables at our industry networking event, the Telecom Exchange. Next one up is November 14th through the 15th, 2016, at the Montage Beverly Hills in Los Angeles. More info at thetelecomexchange.com. Today's topic, SDN and big data, with a focus on practical usage and real-world implementation, has garnered a lot of support and social media buzz. Welcome, our live audience right here today, and thank you also to those who are watching on demand. This roundtable is brought to you on our JSA video platform, which allows our panelists to log in virtually from anywhere around the world. And today, we're spanning the globe. We've got folks logging in from Israel all the way to Los Angeles in streaming live video feeds, care of our partners, Pinnaca. So thank you, Pinnaca, and let's get started. I am honored to introduce our guest moderator and my longtime friend, Rosemary Cochran. She's the principal analyst and co-founder of Vertical Systems Group. Her expertise covers carrier Ethernet, IP VPN services, business fiber deployments, cloud and data center connectivity, legacy services migration trends, and fittingly enough, SDN NFV solutions, which makes her, of course, the perfect guest moderator today to talk Big Data and SDN with our all-star panel. Well, Rosemary, thanks for being with us today, and please do us the honors of introducing our expert panelists. Okay. Thank you very much, Jamie, and welcome to everyone who's uh, watching. Uh, we're very pleased to have you join us uh, for a very informative discussion about SDN Big Data. Each of our speakers will share their insight and perspectives from different aspects of this topic and I'd like to have them each introduce themselves um, and share a little bit about um, what, they're do, what they do in the SDN big data environment. Um, Bill, could you start, please? Yeah, sure, my name is Bill O'Brien. I work for CenturyLink. And I'm the director of the Adaptive Platform Strategy and Development Team, and uh, my team's uh, responsibility is uh, building out uh, SDN and NFE platforms, and also we uh, started one of the first efforts within the company uh, around uh, deploying large Hadoop systems as well. Okay. Andrew? Thanks, Rosemary. Hi, I'm Andrew Kuzminski. I'm the COO and Chief Strategy Officer for Perseus. Um, at, uh, at Perseus, I run our operations uh, engineering and product groups, uh, as well as solutions engineering. And um, uh, uh, last year, I'm sorry, a little bit more than a year ago, we, we rolled out uh, an SDN platform on top of our uh, low latency infrastructure uh, to service the financial services industry uh, in a unique way. So thank you very much for having me on the, on the panel today. Okay, Steve? Hi, my name is Zev, and uh, I work for MRV Communication. I'm the VP of Strategic Marketing. As part of uh, my responsibilities, we actually doing research on SDNFV and implementation as part of our products, a packet optical solution, including uh, software orchestration, and uh, addressing different parts of the use cases, including data center, interconnect, bandwidth on demand, virtual CPEs, and eventually the whole different variants of uh, implementation that's supposed to deliver uh, instead of big and dumb pipes, much more intelligent and dynamic network. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, just to start, we'll talk about um, SDN, Software Defined Networking is, um, as we all know, transforming the telecom industry. Uh, we're moving toward more open, more scalable, more flexible, and more data-driven services and solutions. 
Um, today we're talking about the big data piece of, all, of it all and um, what's happening in this transition, specifically on use cases, implementations, on new services, on new deployments, as well as the challenges. So I'd like to start um, with kind of the architecture view and the platform level. Um, Bill, you've um, talked about um, or described integrated metadata as the oxygen for SDN-based service by phone architectures and um, have obviously lots of experience in, in um, development. Um, could you talk a little more about what that means and how and why that's so essential to the transformation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, when we started this journey back in 2012, uh, we realized, um, you know, with these highly automated systems um, uh, that, that come as part of kind of the SDN and NFE architectures, um, with all that automation and additional layers of abstraction with virtualization and so forth, um, that we're going to need to capture uh, a, a lot of data. And, and before, typically, systems would be uh, staged. They'd be really separate from the platform itself. Um, maybe there'd be a solution that had integrated analytics, um, but it, everything would have to kind of go back to a separate system. So early on, we kind of conceived that the platform itself should really solve for a lot of these problems, should inherently have some analytics capabilities, and more specifically, the ability for these feedback loops. So um, with, the, um, with the robust set of APIs that are typically inherent, with any SDN and NFE uh, platform and the automation that goes into play, we begin to ask ourselves, um, you know, how can we even automate uh, typically decisions that are made by humans and then use this and build intelligent uh, feedback loops back into the platform so that the platform can adapt um, to the operational, um, you know, kind of behavior of the platform itself and all the dynamics that happen with that, as well as how individual users or customers are using uh, our network services uh, here at CenturyLink, um, you know, from a range of um, IP and PLS to Ethernet-based uh, services. Um, so th there was a need for kind of building out um, a big data platform leveraging, um, you know, a lot of the typical tech tools that we see, um, you know, between Hadoop, uh, Spark, um, and using uh, various classes of machine learning uh, and bringing data science uh, scientists on board um, to accomplish that. Excellent. Um, and that's really a good intro then, Andrew, to talk about, um, you know, with all that behind the scenes and this type of, of amazing platform, um, SDN-based with big data. Uh, what types of new service offerings is this enabling in terms of, um, you know, analytics for your customers? Sure. Um, thank you. So, um, uh, there... There's a there's there's definitely a paradigm shift that's that's occurring, uh, especially as as it relates to financial industry, uh, the financial services industry, as we're servicing those customers. Um, and in order to, to keep up with with that shift, um, you know we've 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 adopted SDN as as the platform to be able to service those customers in a much better way. So, uh, you know, we've called it you know the the NetJet model or this Uberization of connectivity. Uh, where you know things have changed and the power of the network um, where, where it can go all the way into the applications hands uh, at least at first needs to go into the customers hand so uh, that customer enablement uh, allowing them to log into a portal uh, to order their own services is um, is at least the first step uh, towards uh, towards offering those customers new services whether that means gaining access to new network routes or uh, uh, new compute virtualization uh, locations. Um, uh, you know that 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 customer enablement is is that first criteria. Um, uh, so I guess the second one is you know as a, as a part of that is uh, is is real time delivery of services. Um, so uh, you know the the the, uh, the Perseus SDN platform needs to enable our customers to be able to operate more quickly and efficiently. And I, and I have a, actually a good real-time example. This happened just uh, just two days ago. 
Um, and and the, 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 uh, the impetus can be, it can, can be different in varying cases, whether uh, from a financial services uh, firm's strategy changes uh, or there's a network event. And in this case, um, uh, there was a network event uh, between Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and the Japanese Stock Exchange, uh, where there was a, a cable that was going down and a cable that was cut at the same time. Um, and our client needed to be able to turn up new capacity uh, between those two points. By logging into that, to the Perseus SDN fabric, um, they were able to enable, uh, enable their services to go live within 24 hours, which, uh, which given that there were no cross necks in place or anything of that nature, there was still some human interaction, but enabling those customers to turn that service up that quick uh, was, was a very, is a very powerful tool. And then, that's, and then finally, I think um, you, you need to think about, well, from the person's perspective, right sizing um, and scalability of services. So, um, you know, this, this particular client um, or, or any other particular client that's using the Perseus SDN fabric uh, might realize serialization issues or propagation issues as a result of congestion, um, and they can alleviate those by adding capacity or potentially uh, they realize that they can be more efficient with less capacity. So giving our clients the opportunity to upgrade and downgrade, downgrade capacity is, uh, is a critical component of, of the Perseus SDN platform. Um, and while we, while we definitely have other uh, products and services um, that are being added to this, uh, to this environment, um, that's, that's, that, was, that was the starting point for us. Right, well that's, um you know, a very good example, those types of use cases of, of what has to happen and the ability to um, really to enable that functionality that quickly. Um, which brings us to, uh, Zoe, you've got um, kind of the, you know, the, the fuel of all this to talk about some of the solutions that, you know, that the big data is, um, you know, kind of helping with and, uh, and how that works in terms of um, going forward. Yeah, so actually it's interesting because obviously the, you know, the linkage to big data era is, is trivial. We're sort of a data-driven society that expects a digital experience and we perceive the futuristic network that's uh, supposed to respond on demand to our requirements and really simplify and literally use this unlimited pool of resources. It's actually interesting if you ask a software guy the network should be unlimited in terms of pool of resources, uh, which brings again into the concept that drives the software disruptive networking. Uh, yes, it sounds a bit ironical, but uh, this is literally of uh, disruption, a story that will shake the industry that tend to emulate sort of a cloud modeling uh, that uh, really speak about large scale of volume, velocity, and variety, which basically this is the, the, the big data. So if we judge the, the numbers of data flood and Rosemary, you, as an analyst, you, you have really good insight on this. It will continue to evolve from IoT and the mobile devices. Uh, commercial mobile devices tend to go into the range of uh, more than 10 billion in the future. And if you look on sensors that br bring uh, also a lot of data, so the estimation of 30 billion of RFIDs or later any other aspects of artificial intelligence will bring the big data as a big topic. So big data creates a sort of tectonic shifts uh, that go hand in hand with server virtualization and new traffic flows in the network that differ substantially from traditional client server model. Um, due to the elasticity nature of uh, cloud environment, uh, big data processing reflects server to server modeling with traffic load that change in location in intensity like uh, Andrew just mentioned over time, uh, which practically demanding a flexible approach to managing network resources. So this means that the deliver of new services over the network and adjust performance and service parameters on per session, per application basis is simply time consuming and not efficient with all the processes and technologies. So this is supposed to change with uh, SDN paradigm. The objective of SDN is really to enable, as discussed, the transformation to open programmable and, uh, and virtualized networks in application driven era. So the new approach is really kind of to empower the software to tell the network what we want it to do 
and configure pool of resources as opposed to how to do and configure manually each device in the network to set up end-to-end -end service to business customers. And additionally, central software intelligence should enable collection of analytical data from entire physical and virtual networks to keep real-time snapshots of capacity usage, SLA performances, and highly granular data on application and user experience. So practically, as of today, the SDN enhance and enhancements in telecom infrastructure and telecom operators' networks they have enabled some telecos to accelerate and simplify provisioning of their own bandwidth and data center resources. But I see it as a, from our experience, the next stage of evolution is that business customers now would like telecom operators to extend the, this virtualization of the network across their wide area network to deliver new and more attractive services at a lower price, obviously. <laughs> And uh, so this will force new business models adoption to reflect uh, sort of a win-win situation of business customers, but still enabling uh, the telecom industry to keep the pace and not move to chapter 11. Indeed challenging. Lots of, lots of challenges. That brings it to challenges. One of them is, and I was an um, excellent view of the, um, of the, the different pieces of, of the network and how we, we are expecting more interaction, more uh, of the data-driven kind of experience. Um, in the telecom world, one of the, the big issues is the connectivity piece, you know, of connecting, um, particularly as um, from a service provider standpoint, you're not um, really extending your footprint everywhere on net, and, um, and that interconnectivity is is really a challenge. Um, uh, maybe, Bill, you may speak to that to some extent in terms of how that is changing or how the data analytics will help in that respect. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's some opportunities there uh, where analytics or the, the data that we can use to uh, improve SLAs or uh, drive new um, connection models. Um, so, I mean, specifically when, when we're capturing this data, um, you know, the uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, improve, uh, be able to predict, really, um, going to a prediction model, so knowing the behaviors of certain interconnects and being able to mitigate that uh, fairly rapidly is going to become more and more critical, right? So, I mean, really the driving uh, uh, you know, motivator here is improving the experience. And when people are buying telecom services, they're really looking for super high availability and performance, and those are guaranteed with uh, various SLAs. So by having, um, by taking all, uh, you know, all those metrics, you can start to build uh, in uh, algorithms that begin to let us know, um, you know, potentially partners that are at higher risk, um, you know, when uh, particularly we generally see trends um, around uh, failures and uh, around load saturation so that we begin to mitigate that uh, ahead of time. Great, great. Um, and, and that brings us to maybe, uh, you know, talking about some of those connectivity issues, um, Andrew, with clients all over the world. Are you, are you seeing different, um, you know, kind of, Trans transition rates uh, for your customers uh, in different regions, or is there any opportunities that you see um, on a geographic basis that are, are more diverse? Um, from a from a client adoption perspective, um, you know we're you know we're seeing a huge uptick uh, in in the client base in Asia uh, specifically. Um, that entire region. Uh, seems to be adopting the platform much more quickly than than uh, than, than North America or Europe is. Um, you know, there's there's you know I think with with the adoption of a new platform or a new technology, we constantly get asked by our clients, um, you know you know why SDN, what is SDN? I mean, at the end of the day, our clients are financial services firms. They're not. I mean, some of them are technology firms, but uh, a lot of them are traders. You know, they're 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 trying to figure out how to trade efficiently on different marketplaces. So um, there is there is definitely some fear in the adoption of, of of a new platform, and there are a lot of questions. But um, but there's certainly 
uh, there certainly are a lot of benefits to the platform, um, and you know, from a regional perspective, we're seeing you know less, I guess, less fear uh, as it relates uh, to adoption of the platform from from our Asia Pacific customers. Um, I just wanted to touch on something that Bill said before, uh, which is you know predictability, um, and you know building a predictive network as well. And I think that's I think that's the one of the key elements that just needs to just be re-emphasized because that is. That is uh, one of the huge benefits uh, for our clients uh, as it relates to them being able to adopt this service and, and having software to be able to, to create those predictive analytics so that we can um, so that we can create a more efficient, more effective network uh, that is that is as scalable as a network should be to react to what Zeev said before, which is, uh, is is the application which is which is or this which is going to be ultimately driving those network decisions. Um, so. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just digressing a little, but um, but I just wanted to touch on those points to reemphasize a little. I, I think that's an excellent point because um, clearly predictability and performance are are key for um, for all of this to to work and be successful. That is that is one of the major goals. Um, so when we talk about um, challenges, yeah, you know, I'd let you talk a little bit about that. So there's the challenges going ahead, um, what's required, what's going to um, be the focus of, of, of what people have to deal with in, in, in this transformation. What, do you, what would you say is kind of the top thing there? Uh, you know, for the telecom market, the, the biggest obstacle is to complete end-to-end -end service concept and do it in de facto technology and industry standards. Uh, this includes network provisioning, data center resources, application management, user portals that should complete the change of the ordering model and align with the uh, cloud business concept. Uh, let's not, not forget also that the telecom environment is typically more conservative and build, uh, and usually telecom build everything twice for very high SLA as mentioned previously. And it's, I even allow myself to, to use specific quote that was said by CenturyLink uh, CTO Amir Hussein, and he said, "We need to transform from telephone company to an IT-based service company, which which is really mindset shift from from the old style of telecoms, and and think more software." Uh, now the other side is uh, of the story is that the biggest myth of SDN is is that it one size fits all, uh, but this is a longer transformation with with processes and, and there are no shortcuts and in fact virtualization in data center is mature I think the use cases we discussed previously based on Bill and Andrew um, are known uh, but the existing telecom wider and network in internal IT are completely different in terms of technical requirements adaption process so challenges for mass market implementation still focused on requirements that tend to be the silver bullets of such radical transformation process. Just if we look at the modern OSS that's supposed to happen with this, the shift that's supposed to happen and standard APIs for automation and abstraction of the network, this is still evolving stage. Uh, some companies, uh, some telecoms, they're already in more advanced mode and we heard a lot about uh, AT&T domain to the toe project, but uh, many others are still doing wall garden uh, multi-domain uh, environment uh, use cases and analysis. Um, if we look at this stage, uh, more IT transformation and cultural mindset uh, will need to change because it's, it's really knowledge, learning, and corporate strategy that's supposed to happen. Bill, you have anything to add? You made a really, really good point. Um, I think one of the major challenges are going to be for most companies is going to be the cultural, right? Getting, um, there's organizational changes, the procedural changes that are going to have to take uh, place. And as he pointed out, kind of end to end, that's impacting a lot of desperate systems. So here we're kind of really making this mind shift change where we're talking about kind of federation of internal platforms, making that shift to uh, DevOps and this highly integrated data model that now 
um, where we're having systems and machines make decisions that was really the domain of humans. And that's a huge shift. And so there's a trust layer that needs to happen. And we'll see that come in with vendors where they're going to be having this integrated kind of smart systems. But in, in these large heterogeneous environments, we can't really rely on a single vendor to provide kind of those smart solutions. So we need to look at it holistically. And so I think individual companies will need to build up, um, you know, their uh, capabilities and kind of this uh, data science in order to, um, you know, allow for this transformation to happen. And that really, you know, requires that platforms are put in place, not only kind of these automated SDN, but really understanding what uh, big data platforms uh, look like and what they can do. It's not trivial. And um, you have to put in the time. And when we look at large web firms, they've invested almost a decade into this. And they're doing very, very interesting things now. So this is not something that you can necessarily buy completely off the shelf. Um, you're going to have to make that investment in your organization as well as in, in uh, you know, the knowledge uh, within your company so that they can be, um, begin uh, to evolve um, in the development of the algorithms to make the smart uh, systems and smart networks. Right, and I, I can, um, I would say that that is clearly one of the things that we see um, from tracking of this uh, development and, and to move to SDN platforms. And not, it's not just a technology issue, um, and clearly it is a challenge. It's something that can be bought off itself, and it does take time. But there is the other corporate kind of cultural issue, the commitment, and um, people. People are a big, big piece of that and the skill sets. Um, so there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of aspects of this that are yet to be. Um, just so we've got maybe one more, uh, you know, question to, I'm going to throw to you, Andrew, about challenges. Um, you know, we talked about some things that are happening on the, um, the services side and the, um, you know, companies that are trying to deliver services. Um, from your customer standpoint, what are the challenges that you see um, for, for um, providing services to customers or from the customers as well, from what they're telling you about challenges in moving ahead? Um, I mean, really, the, 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 biggest, the biggest challenge has, has just been, has been the, 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 the risks of, you know, fear of the unknown. Um, I mean, the, the, the customers are, are happy to, to get onto a service that is, is more secure, uh, that is more scalable, that has um, you know, better availability as a result of the predictive analytics that we're putting out, uh, that we're utilizing. Um, and they're, and they're fr frankly, they're, they're happy to migrate away from legacy extranet services and you know, things like MPLS and get, in, and get onto a smarter infrastructure. Uh, I think it's it's it, you know fear of, of going onto a new platform is, is especially from a financial services perspective uh, where they're you know they're, they're unaware of kind of what they're getting into is always a little scary. Um, but you know for, for Zeev's comment and Bill's comment, you know, there are no shortcuts to building a network like this. Um, and as long as you don't take any shortcuts and you hire the right people that have the right skills and you go through the correct processes of building the correct inventories and knowing what you have. Um, then and, and doing it the right way, then then you can overcome the, the, the you know the, the objections that any clients will have, and, and we have a lot of clients that are already using this platform very happily and uh, and very successfully. So um, while there are challenges, they're not overcomable. Right. Great. Well, that um, interrupts up, Jamie. I'm going to turn that back to you. But thank you for um, uh, great insight from our, from our panel. And thank you, Rosemary, for moderating our roundtable on SDN and big data. Thanks uh, also, um, as Rosemary just said, to our esteemed panelists, Bill O'Brien of CenturyLink, Ziv Dreyer, MRV, Andrew Kosminski of Perseus. Thanks for your thoughtful insights on the SDN challenges and opportunities that lay before us. Thank you, audience, for joining us. If you want to see this and other monthly virtual roundtables on demand, plus the calendar for upcoming roundtables, both virtually and at Telecom Exchange, go ahead and check out jamiescotto.com and thetelecomexchange.com. And if you'd like your C-Level, 
featured here next time, go ahead and email us, pr at jamiescotto.com. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals, and JSA Radio, your voice for tech and telecom on iHeartRadio. Till next time, happy networking.